Brother Joe is the missionary and chaplain to the Kentucky state government, and uh, he was he's a Kentucky native who uh, has dedicated his life to ministry and especially to the Kentucky state government and those serving in our nation's capital. Um, Brother Joe um, has surrendered to preach, the, it says, at the age of 14. That's a pretty early start. Amen. 49 years ago. And uh, he married his wife, Sandra. She's here, I believe, in October 1965. God has blessed him with three children. And uh, Brother Joe, I like this, is a veteran of the United States Air Force. And I also like that he got his degrees from Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green, where I'm from. And uh, he started a Christian school ministry in LaRue County. At the time when Christian schools were having many battles with government, he became very involved with local and uh, he's been involved all over the country uh, with legislators, congressmen, state workers, ministering, counseling. He travels to Washington each month and ministers to those serving in the nation's capital. Welcome Brother Joe Adams, missionary chaplain to Kentucky State Government. Thanks for coming today. I don't know if you believed all that or not, it doesn't make any difference. You know, I want to say this, the Bluegrass Institute uh, is doing a good think tank. I never thought I'd be involved in anything that thought, but anyway, we'll make a disclaimer. They may not agree with uh, everything I have to say, but they're doing a good work uh, in preparing us mentally to get together. I want to see America come back to God. I want to see I want to see what our forefathers envisioned for this country that in 300 and what less than uh, 30 years 330 years or so 37 almost 30, 40 40 I, you know uh, I want to see that uh, made this country great continues to make it great in this world you know I, I'd have to say this probably as I read and I, I showed this this morning at a breakfast we had earlier you probably have heard about it. It's the new home, Homeland Security document. I downloaded it. You are looking at the number one terrorist in Kentucky. Now, let me say this. I got saved when I was 10 years old. I began to preach when I was 14. That's 49 years ago this June. I preached my first sermon. I love the liberty that we have in America. And I pray we can keep that liberty. Amen? Amen. And listen, it's here, listen, there's no sense for the tax rates we're paying. But worse than that, there's no sense in the spending that's going on. If we did away with the 9,000 earmarked spending that's in this new budget, we could do away with all the taxes. And when you deal with it, yes. Okay, hold it up a little bit more. We can do that. And and we need we need to realize that that it, it it's going to take some responsibility. But you know, according to the to my country and this document, I downloaded to read it. The reason I'm the number one terrorist in Kentucky is this: I'm a fundamental Christian. You know. I, I look at this document and I pick through it and I see that uh, uh, that I believe in the sanctity of life and I'm against abortion. That's that's a right wing extremist, according to this to the Homeland Security folks. I believe in the Second Amendment. I, part I, I participate. And not only that, it says I'm storing up ammunition. Yes, I am. You know, uh, I served in the military for four years and a year in combat. I had to be helped up these steps because I'm 100% connected from the injuries that I received there through Agent Orange. You know, I have no problem with serving my country. I, I didn't have to go. My father uh, died of 100% uh, of World War II injuries. I didn't have to go. But I thought if you live somewhere, you ought to pay the rent. And I volunteered. I didn't like leaving my wife for a year. But I, you know, they were going to draft me for two, but you know, you can tell how intelligent I am. I, I wasn't going to let them uh, draft me for two. I tricked them. I joined for four. <laughs> Stuck it to them. You know, according to this document, I'm upset with the current economic policies of this. Uh, and I am. Listen, I 
got a degree in accounting and business management from one of our state universities, I can read the Wall Street Journal and tell you what's going on. I'm a 63-year-old man who's raised three children. I don't owe any credit cards. God's blessed. And the thing about it is, I realize that we've got to operate on what budgets we have. Amen? And we need to realize our government is supposed to operate like that. I I'm expecting in a few days my ninth grandchild. And yet that grandchild is born into a debt that my generation is leaving that child that he will never pay, nor his children. Even at, eight, even at the minimum of $800 billion a year interest before we start taking care of the debt. I'm a terrorist, it says in here, because I'm against illegal immigration. I'm against anything illegal. <laughs> I'm a terrorist, according to this group, because I have a fear of the new world order, and they said, and communism. Let me tell you something. I fought communism at the end of a gun barrel. But we have a greater privilege here. We can fight it with ballots and not bullets. And we may not have the best choices every election, and if we don't, that's your fault. And if we have it, we need to make a choice between the worst, whether we like it or not. And we're reaping what we've sown. And we need to realize we need to encourage folks to run for office that have the right kind of principles, and if we don't, it's our fault. Everyone, if you don't like it, stand up and do something about it. But don't just roll around and gripe and moan. We need to, I'm also, I notice in here, uh, I, I am a terrorist, according to our latest Homeland Security document, because I believe in the traditional family. Now folks, that make, because I love my country enough to serve it, they train me in, in weapons and they train me in the expertise of that. But I've never dreamed of turning them a nation that I loved and was willing to die for. We need to understand something. If we're going to get to the grassroots of this thing, and if we're going to do something about it, we've got to stand up and talk to some people. We need to share the message with folks around it. I'm not, I'm not talking about Democrats or Republicans. I stand on principles. You know, when I think about this, I, 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 I've got a quote here from, from uh, John Adams. And, you know, he said that the, the wonderful thing about the, uh, uh, the American Revolution was this. In one dispensable bond, quickly coming along, were the principles of civil government for the first time in the history of the world and Christianity. And folks, these, this nation no doubt when it started out saying that we were created by our creator, not our evolver. That we got the laws of nature and nature's God. And when that, when, and when that declaration ends up by saying we're looking for divine providence, our forefathers knew what America should be founded on. Principles, not parties. And we ought to vote for principles. I'm registered in a party. You might not agree with the party I'm registered, but I vote on principles. Yes. The party I'm registered in left my principles. I didn't leave them, but I'm staying where I'm at. I, it doesn't control my vote one bit. We've got to realize that we're going to have to tell everybody around us to look at the principles of what's going on, the debt that we're getting in. We're going to have to realize this. Somewhere along the line, we're going to have to suffer for the sins of the money we have borrowed and put on the backs of others. And we're going to have, it, if, I, if my training uh, in the public universities is right, somewhere inflation is going to take over and we're all going to suffer. Somewhere we're going to pay the price. So it's time we stood up and start designing what we're going to do to change the ideology of folks that would vote for and accept charity on every side and not willing to do what to do. We need to be willing to work or we don't eat. And it's up to us to make sure we take care of those around us that may be less fortunate. That's the job for us as, as God's children to do. It's not the job of the government. Amen. Brother Joe Adams, let's hear it for Brother Joe. Thank you, man. What if we had more preachers like Brother Joe, huh?